please stand. And if you could face the back, we can't start in the, uh, in the hall and go outside and do all the normal things, but uh, slightly different starting, facing the wrong way. Hosanna to the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome this morning as we gather on the uh, facing outwards to face as Christ comes into his city. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing for it by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his works as our saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. In your pews you will have found palm crosses. Please, if you lift them high. God, our Saviour, whose Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. He is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. 
Let us pray for a closer union with Christ in his suffering and in his glory. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them comfort me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare my guilty? Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. The second reading, a reading from Paul's letter to the Philippines. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Sorry, we don't say that bit. Hear the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Please have a seat. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, 
As he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she spoke upon the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, finished and r- furnished and ready. Make pre- preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their place and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, One of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of heaven. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to John, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter 
and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. 
What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death, so began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she st stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly, you are one of them. You are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered what that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. 
It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that it, in this way he breathed his last, he said, Surely, truly, This man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead and summoned the centurion. He asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene, And Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid. This is the passion of the Lord.
In response to the Passion reading, we pray for God's mercy. Responding to the words, let us pray to the Lord. With the words, Lord, have mercy. For forgiveness, for the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace, to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline, to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they might, may find support and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who care for others, who nurse, who teach, who embrace. in the midst of this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them. For those who are sick in body, mind or spirit, among them, Sandy, Sandra, Seamus, Megan Towersy, Deborah Hullett, Bridget, Nick. Those known to each of us here in this place and at home. Those known to you alone, Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. For Mia Aristobulo, and in the year's mind, for Marian Bober, Mary Hickson, Mayas Islamathakal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us.
Please stand. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood. For he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please let us offer one another a sign of peace from our places. My peace be with you. And if you're at home watching online, please do offer one another a sign of peace uh, in the chat or by waving to one another on Zoom. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more. The triumph, the, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Our advocate in heaven to plead our cause exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, In the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we are command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So, Father, we rem when supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you. 
gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the cup, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. If by any just impediment one does not receive the sacrament of Christ's body or blood, the curate shall instruct them that if you do truly repent of your sins and steadfastly believe that Jesus Christ has suffered death upon the cross for you and shed his blood for your redemption, earnestly remembering the benefits you have thereby received and giving God hearty thanks, therefore you eat and drink the body and blood of our Savior Christ profitably to your soul although you do not receive the sacrament with your mouth. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. To feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is all. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by him, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. In a moment I will uh, proclaim the body and the blood of Christ, uh, after which I will um, sanitize my hands and my uh, face covering and uh, proceed to say no further words um, until the distribution is complete. Um, Based on where you're sitting, if your aisle is closest to you, please, 
when you come forward, exit your pew from that up to into that aisle. If you come forward um, down the central aisle or the aisle on that side, and you can see there's markings showing a two meter distancing on the floor, um, and a space to, place to sanitize your hand before you get to the very front. Uh, and it, once you've received the sacrament, which I will place in your hand without saying a word, if you could then proceed back to your place by crossing the nave uh, here at the front, um, so that you go back and then up that side aisle, um, returning to your places from the back. There'll be, um, hopefully our church wardens will be able to give you some direction as to where you're going, uh, if you're confused. If you don't wish to receive the sacrament, but would rather receive the blessing, please do still come forward. Um, you're very welcome to, and I will give you the host which you will be receiving has been uh, maintained in a covered, closed container throughout this. I will cleanse the inside of it before I uh, distribute. The body of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you, to proclaim you as Lord and King, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work and glory. Amen. Uh, notices for this week. Um, let's see. Uh, just a reiteration of the things happening this week, it's beginning with today. At midday, we have the last of our Lent course, um, Rooted in Faith, uh, over Zoom. Anybody who wishes to join us, uh, miss, having missed the previous ones, is fine. You're very welcome to join us for today as we talk about uh, how to live a Christ centered life. Um, and then this evening at nine o'clock, we have Compline again over Zoom. And then this week, uh, as well as the um, morning prayer streamed uh, at 10 o'clock on Tuesday and Thursday, and the um, midday prayer we have streamed uh, on uh, Wednesday at midday, uh, we will also be having a service of the Eucharist uh, every day. Uh, on Monday and Wednesday, those will be at 8 p.m. And on Tuesday, that will be at 7 a.m. And then on Thursday, we have our Monday Thursday uh, service at 8 p.m. Uh, each of these Eucharists are, you can attend both in person or online, uh, whatever suits uh, you best. Um, the Monday Thursday service, there won't be a washing of feet, though we will be reflecting on the washing of the feet. Uh, and hearing that story, and the service will end with the stripping of the altars and the uh, and the watch, go the gospel of the watch will conclude the service. The the watch will remain uh, online, uh, hopefully, through the night. Um, so if you wish to participate in from home at any time through the night, you're very welcome to go onto Zoom or onto um, Facebook and. Um, prayer with the uh, sacrament. So that's Thursday. Friday, uh, midday uh, till two o'clock, the church will be open for individual prayer. The stations of the cross will be up around the building for you to come and, and view. The, the entrance for that will be uh, to the chapel over here uh, because the first station will be there and there'll be a kind of circuit that you can work around and then back out by the Lady Chapel door, oh, by, the, by the Memorial Garden door. So uh, that's from 12 to 2. And then at 2 o'clock, we will have the liturgy of the day um, in the anti-communion. And, um, and, uh, and that will be at 2 o'clock on Friday. Again, on Zoom and Facebook, but also here in person, uh, if you would like to join us uh, in person. For all those services, while it's not necessary, please do um, drop me a line if you plan to come, just so that I uh, have an idea of, of who's expected and how many uh, space is limited. And then on Easter Sunday at 5.30, we will be beginning our vigil, uh, our dawn vigil in the garden. Uh, there will be chairs put out on the grass. Um, we will be out there for briefly. Uh, for a couple of readings and the lighting of the fire, the blessing of the new Easter candle, and then we will bring the light of Christ back into the building uh, as the sun rises. And so that's at 5.30, beginning in the garden uh, and continuing in the, in the church uh, for the first Mass of Easter. And then the festival Eucharist of Easter Day will be at 10 o'clock. There will be no 8 o'clock service on Easter Sunday. And there'll be no Compline on Easter Sunday as well. Goodness, sounds like a busy week. Um, I wish you all a very blessed and holy, holy week as we look towards uh, walking this path of Christ's passion with him and coming to his resurrection in a week's time. I invite you all to stand. The Lord be with you. 
who so loved the world that he gave his only son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. As we depart, I do invite you to take, if you've got a, a, this seat is available sign, please do take it with you. Uh, and we exit via the memorial garden.